Unlike many drinks named for places, and yes, Moscow Mule, I'm looking at you, the Irish coffee was actually invented in Ireland. Joe Sheridan was the chef at an airport restaurant near Limerick in the 1940s, in the days when transatlantic flights were made on flying boats and often had to turn back due to inclement weather. The weary passengers needed warmed up, so Sheridan spiked their coffees with some local whiskey and topped it with cream. One passenger apparently asked if he had used Brazilian coffee, perhaps attributing the delightful warming sensation to the coffee and not the liquor, to which he got the reply, no, it was an Irish coffee, accompanied, at least in my head, by a cheeky Irish wink. Inevitably, one such transatlantic passenger took the drink home with him to his local in San Francisco. The Buena Vista Cafe is unchallenged as the home of the Irish coffee in the States, to the point that they actually offered Sheridan a job and he ended up tending bar there for 10 years. I'm very sorry to interrupt the video, but we do have some exciting news, so much so that we're doing an emergency broadcast from my bar here at Bomba. We've actually been working really hard on a bartending course in collaboration with the International Open Academy. So it's fully online, you can do it anywhere and fully accredited, so you do get a certificate of completion at the end of it. So whether you want to be a professional bartender or just even really elevate your home bartending game, then definitely take a look. All of the details are in the description below. Uh, we will also have some pretty massive discounts happening from when the course launches for the first 10 days. So keep an eye here and on Instagram and our other socials for more details on when that will be live. Now, before we get back to the Irish coffee, a little bit more housekeeping. Thanks to our Patreon supporters, Sam, Lee, Sho, Joel, Ryan, Andrea, Durishin, Mikael, Stephen and Stephen. If you'd like to join them and help us to make more content for everyone, check out the link below. As with many simple cocktails, this is all about the proportions. Too much of any one thing will knock out the balance, so make sure you choose an appropriate size of glass. Despite my brief stint as a Starbucks barista, we're not doing venties here. So eight ounce or 230 mils is a pretty standard latte glass size. Like this and works well. If you're pumping out a lot of them, then it definitely makes sense to have a filter coffee machine on the bar. Um, I usually use a cafetiere at home. I've definitely worked at places where we would make it with espresso coffee, so basically just spiking a long black or Americano. And this tastes fine, but I do think the softer flavor of filter is best for sort of melding all of the flavors together and also consistency. This drink is meant to be comforting, so I do like a nice medium roast. You don't want anything too dark and aggressive, but at the same time, it needs to stand up to the whiskey. Sheridan originally used Tullamore Dew in his Irish coffee, and I see no reason to deviate. It's a blend of pot still and grain whiskey and triple distilled, and if you don't know what any of that means, then you probably need to watch my Irish whiskey episode. But it has that quintessential biscuity smoothness and a nice light vanilla note, which works really well here. Jameson's or Bushmills, something else kind of triple distilled and pretty light in body would definitely work as well. But I would stick to a blend because again, we want everything working together on the same team and single malts and pot stills do tend to want to steal the show a little bit. Of course, you can add a liqueur or great nutmeg or cinnamon on top. It's really fun to play with all those kinds of flavors that go really well with coffee. But I actually really like the simplicity of this drink, which ends up being so much more than the sum of its parts. I also don't serve it with a stirring spoon as the sensation of drinking the warm, sweet coffee through the cool cream is what it's all about. The workflow on this is important as well, especially in a bar environment, because the aim obviously is to get the drink to the guests warm. I've actually had a few questions about sort of organization and workflow in general, and I think it would be a good episode. So drop me a comment if you would find that useful. So to get started on this one, we obviously want to heat everything up and get our coffee brewed. Get your boiling water, however you've done it in a kettle. Got mine from the coffee machine and just pop some in the glass to warm that up and then in your coffee. While that's all just sitting and getting nice and toasty, we're gonna then whip our cream. About 90 mils of cream, uh, you obviously don't have to really measure it because if you whip too much, it's not the end of the world. And then this little trick is to take your um, coil off of your Hawthorne strainers, pop that in too, 
So that essentially works as a little whip in here and just helps get the cream to the consistency that you're after with a little bit less elbow grease. You can, of course, just shake really hard, but I'm lazy. I'm tired already. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see what other famous cocktail I'll be using this technique for soon. That's good, so you can sort of see it's pourable, but pretty thick now. So that's perfect. At this point then, we can plunge the coffee. Dump out your water. Coffee first, so to about halfway. You can always add a little bit more at the end if necessary. And then we go 45 mils of a nice malty and blended Irish whiskey. And 15 mils of your brown sugar syrup, or to taste. If you have a sweet tooth, then treat yourself. And we can give it all a little stir. And then we just want to pour the cream slowly over the back of the spoon. Look at that, I'm so strong. I whipped it a little bit too much, to be honest. Quite thick. I'm always really glad when that actually works as well. Even after 10 years of bartending, I always get a little bit nervous that it's not going to stay separate. And you have a nice creamy head, Guinness looking Irish coffee there. Use a little green plate in for Ireland. It's obviously nice to give this to your customers if you don't have a latte glass that has a little handle on it, just so they don't burn their little fingers. Irish coffee. So now you know. Let's give it a taste. Such a good combination. You know, considering that it is a pretty kind of light in body uh, and not particularly powerful whiskey, still comes through really well just because the proportions are good. The cream gives it a really nice kind of body and texture because obviously sometimes with hot drinks, uh, they can feel a little bit kind of weak and insipid just because there's a very, you know, you've got some water in there as well. Um, but the, the cream just really kind of thick, thickens it and binds it all together. Makes it very, very Moorish. Yum.